Want a tutorial on how I got here? Let's do it. You must always start with the most time consuming pieces of sugar art and that in this case is fondant flowers. You see me adding a little bit of cornstarch to the mold. That is an old baker's trick, nothing new. Cornstarch helps release the fondant from the mold when you're ready to demold. After you dust the cavity with cornstarch, pinch off a very small amount of fondant and start to press it in to the flower cavity. Before you do this, however, add a little bit of cornstarch to your fingertips. I did just didn't show it so that the fondant doesn't stick to you. Now you may get lucky or just really good at your job like myself here and end up with almost the perfect amount of fondant or just adding a little bit to get it to the edges. Now if you are someone who can't eyeball that kind of thing, I get it. It used to be me all day. I'm going to show you how to scrape it off with an offset spatula. Now for the fun, slightly terrifying parts, you're going to press into the center of the cavity to get the fondant to release. Remember, this is why cornstarch is so important. And releasing once more, take your time, press in the center of the cavity and boom shaka laka said the millennial <laughs> Okay, and on this mold, we're adding too much fondant so I can show you what to do. Take a small offset spatula, put it in the center of that cavity and gently scrape off the excess, keeping the spatula almost flush. Once you do one side, go back in the center and do the other, pulling again from the center and there you have it. You may have to finesse a little bit of excess fondant back into the cavity, demold and you are done. Just kidding, there's still lots to do and you're going to want these fondant flowers to dry overnight before following the next step, which is the fun step, painting. And if you're new here, let me introduce you to our elite painting powders. They are activated food colors meant for painting and dry dusting. And when you mix them with our color solution, it makes the most amazing edible paint you will ever work with for cookies, cakes, and yes, fondant. Oh, and chocolate, which I'm gonna show you later. Consistency is always key. You're adding a little bit of powder to maybe three to four drops of color solution until you achieve that acrylic-like consistency that definitely moves around the palette. It has some movement, which will help the paint glide onto that confection. Now, I do also wanna plug Edward's paintbrush set because I absolutely love the various sizes and shapes that he came up with. You know, he's been a cake decorator for 30 years. He's been doing it since he was like 14 years old. So when he manufactured all of these color lines, he absolutely knows what sugar artists need. And that's including all of the tools that he offers, like these paint brushes. These are tools that he chooses to use. So you definitely need to check him out on thesugarart.com. It's so easy to paint these flowers. You just need tiny paint brushes and the right consistency of elite powders to color solution. And you will have honestly so much fun. This forget-me-not is the blue of my dreams. And I'm using sunflower in the center of every single flower. It is the number one yellow in this collection. And all of the colors I chose today actually complement one another very well. It is the perfect spring palette. To summarize, it's Aurora Rose, which is the most beautiful pink he makes, Forget Me Not Blue, English Lavender, and Sunflower. I mean, how gorgeous is this POV, right? These colors are magic. Speaking of magic, let's paint chocolate. The difference between painting chocolate and any other confection, honestly, chocolate cannot absorb anything. It is a fat piece of candy. Wait, no. It's a fatty piece of candy. <laughs> What she means is chocolate has fat inside of it. Okay, but that's basically what I said. Anyways, when you paint chocolate, you're basically just gliding it on and it's sitting on top. It will absorb some of your paint, but not all of it. So you want to be careful, especially if you're packaging your confections for some. This mini egg mold is also on our website and how cute did they turn out? And now the super fun part, decorating our cupcakes. And I really feel like anyone could do this cupcake because I taught you everything you need to know. Well, if you don't know how to bake the cupcake or ice the cupcake. I can't help you there. That's Ed's arena. And I think he has multiple blogs on that. Or another idea, go buy store-bought cupcakes with white icing and then just do the fun part like me. I really love how the little eggs and flowers turned out. They're super beautiful and perfect for spring or Easter cupcakes. All products used today are linked in the caption below. I thank you for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And we thank you always for being Team Sugar Heart.